Welcome to another video from the Guards Museum. In this second fashion themed video I'll be finishing our look at modern military fashion. Then I'll examine the craze for vintage military fashion in the swinging 60s. But first, in our last video looking at military clothing in everyday or fashion use, we left out one type of garment that above all others typifies the trend military trousers, or pants as our American friends would say. Military trousers are everywhere. The chino is now synonymous with smart casual and combats or cargo trousers are an everyday casual garment. The classic khaki chino is not only military in design but in its very colour. Khaki originated with the British Indian Army in the 1850s. Sir Harry Lumsden was experimenting with dyeing his men's white uniforms, a mix of coffee, curry powder and mulberry to produce a colour that blended better with the environment. This eventually became known as khaki from the Urdu word for dusty. The British Army realised that its traditional red uniforms were no longer suited to its imperial deployments. They made the soldiers stand out in the brush of South Africa or India and were no longer needed to distinguish friend from foe as they had been in the set-piece European battles of the 17th to the 19th centuries. The introduction of cartridges that produced less smoke to give them away when fired meant soldiers could now consider hiding. Refining this lesson in the Sudan and the Boer Wars meant that the British Army went into the First World War with a modern khaki uniform, as opposed to the French for instance, who had bright colours as you can see here, and paid the price for this against modern weaponry. The Americans adopted the idea at the end of the 19th century. They sourced a supply of khaki cotton trousers for their Spanish-American wars from China. The name chinos is said to have come about from the Spanish referring to the material as chinos, meaning Chinese. By the Second World War the US had adopted a khaki, light cotton, low-waisted, belted trouser for their officers and the classic chino design was born. After the war they were made cool by the likes of Steve McQueen and James Dean and also became a uniform for the Ivy League college kids. Their versatility and ability to match with other items for all occasions keeps them relevant for men and women alike. Although like many fashions they did lose their edge and became synonymous with dad casual, magazines such as GQ regularly cover chino fashion and they will no doubt be around for many years. Gap, more than any other outlet, owned the khaki trouser for many years in both combat and chino styles. They even had a khaki swing dance campaign in the late 1990s. Combat trousers or cargo pants are so established on the high street it's hard to believe they only really appeared en masse in the 1990s. Most still follow the classic design of the US battle dress uniform BDU trousers typified by baggy or expanding pockets on the legs. But the concept of externally pocketed military trousers actually originated with the British in their 1930s battle dress. This featured a large leg pocket on the front for a map and a smaller one for field dressing. This inspired the US paratroopers who were looking for a way to stuff more ammunition and equipment into their kit as they could only take what they could carry. By the 1980s most army trousers had leg pockets and were available as surplus but it was the US BDU design that went mainstream in the 90s when it was adopted by rappers and other fashion leaders. Although in the UK it's often credited to a girl band called All Saints. Mm. BDUs had two expanding pockets on the upper legs, button flies for strength, adjustable waists, drawstrings on the leg bottom and were made from ripstop material. Genuine ones were rare in popular sizes but the original manufacturers produced commercial ones and it wasn't long before the high street caught on. It also chimed well with the American workwear fashion trend pioneered by Carhartt with many choosing their cargoes in workwear colours. And lastly on cargo pants they're a great example of how fashion makes many of the original military features redundant over time. The ripstop fabric, leg ties and button flies on the original BDUs are now largely gone and despite all the pockets Modern cargo is likely to be more than a mobile phone, purse or wallet these days. 
Although, as we have seen, mass surplus led the way to high street styles, it was the fashion for one-off or vintage military styles in the swinging 60s that produced some of the iconic images of the time. The counterculture and youth movements of the period produced young people who rejected the establishment and its traditions but were fascinated by its trappings. They adopted its symbols such as clothing to mock it and the military, being one of the pillars of society, was an easy target. There was an irony too in those men who had narrowly avoided British national service, which ended in the early 1960s, choosing to wear military clothing on their own terms. The fact that they stood out so clearly from the staid fashions of their parents or mainstream youth, perhaps even attracting harassment in the streets, made it all the more edgier. Remember this was only 20 years after the Second World War and there were many proud veterans of that and the First World War who thought it an insult to their service and country to wear a uniform so frivolously. In many cases these were their fathers. Britain was also fighting a series of bush wars in colonies as it paved the way for independence and in the late 1960s protest against the Vietnam War became a fashion in its own right. One shop was at the very centre of the trend. I was Lord Kitchener's valet on Portobello Road and Carnaby Street. Originally selling Victorian era accessories and hats, it started selling military clothing in the same bygone style, whatever was available. Eric Clapton was the first customer of note when he bought a Victorian era rifles jacket in 1966. Then, as Robert Allback from the shop recalled, I'm sitting there one morning and in walked John Lennon, Mick Jagger and Cynthia Lennon and I didn't know whether I was hallucinating but it was real and Mick Jagger bought a red grenadier guardsman drummer's jacket probably for about four or five pounds they all came from Mossbross and British Army surplus so Mick Jagger bought this tunic and wore it on ready steady go when the stones closed the show by performing paint it black the next morning there was a line of a hundred people wanting to buy this tunic and we sold everything in the shop by lunchtime. Jagger's Guards drummer tunic is one of the most eye-catching in the army with its musician's wings and fleur-de-lis pattern. He may or may not have been aware that the striking white and blue motif was a French emblem adopted by the guards following one of their many victories over the French in the 1700s. The boldness of the design was so that the officers could quickly identify their drummers on the battlefield because they relied on them to pass instructions via the drumbeat. These tunics became a firm favourite of the time and the guard's tunic was resurrected as a fashion statement by the Libertines in 2002 and more recently by Harry Styles, no doubt hoping to cash in on the Jagger image. Jimi Hendrix brought a cavalry hussar jacket or dolman from Lord Kitchener's in 1967 and this look was another major trend. One story is that it was the owner's own jacket and Hendrix loved it so much he kept upping his offer to buy it until he got it. He had several jackets of the style and when he wore them open chested on stage with his wild hair this turned the upright smart cavalry officer image on its head. Like the scarlet and red jackets these Victorian style cavalry jackets with distinctive gold frogging have also endured as fashion statements. To the new romantics of the 1980s they embodied everything about the flamboyant bygone era that they loved, as epitomised most by Adam and the Ants. Michael Jackson wore a number of Victorian style jackets for their sheer showmanship. Cheryl Cole's military themed jacket from 2009 was on trend with that season's catwalk offerings from Balmain and Ralph Lauren. The Hazar style has even made it into knitwear as Vivian Westwood's autumn 2018 offering shows. Its description states, The relaxed cardigan takes inspiration from army wear, shaded in a pink and khaki pattern to give a vintage feel. While vintage was the military look of many in the 60s, the harsh realities of the Vietnam War and the protests against it influenced another style. Some returning soldiers who wore their dress uniforms with pride became the object of derision. Society held them responsible for the horrors of their war in a way never seen before. So uniforms became a symbol of protest when other veterans wore their tattered field jackets and shirts at anti-war rallies. John Lennon was a key figure in the peace movement and frequently appeared in a military shirt complete with rank stripes 
and unit insignia. It was an OG 107 fatigue shirt, and of course, it wasn't his uniform. It was a gift from an American soldier. The badge's shirt wasn't actually worn in Vietnam either, but he probably didn't know or care. It was all symbolic for him. He wore it at his Madison Square Garden concert, for interviews, and around town. So that's our journey through the swinging 60s and the military trends in fashion of that period. In the next video, I'll look at some older trends and the forgotten military roots of some everyday garments. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to our channel where we'll be exploring more history and delving into our collection in further videos. You can also check out our new podcast series on Buzzsprout, Bearskins, Bayonets and Bravery. Notes from the Gars Museum. Thank you very much.